Hello guys, welcome back to another Apex Racing Academy setup tutorial. This is, oh, what is it, the penultimate one now on the uh, McLaren MP430. We are at Silverstone this week. I'll be putting this video up a bit later. I do apologize for that. It's not going to be so useful for Silverstone, but really we're just talking about the differential and brake bias, how we can um, fine tune the balances to fit you. Now there's a lot of setups that have been shared this uh, this season, not only from the Apex Academy, um, but also other people as well. And there's that setup shop that from season one that I've got some great setups in there too. So do give those a little look and use some of what we have shared through some of the past videos. You know, just get those tighter pressures into the right place for you. Use those. Uh, videos that I shared at the start of the season where we talk about pressures and canvas get them use you can improve somebody else's setup just by making the tires work for you better and then this one will um, will be quite handy as well this is like fine tuning a set so if they're convinced that it's a great set you can come into the uh, differential and make some uh, adjustments on the brake bias and the car can feel much more to your liking so <clears throat> let's get cracking on excuse me I'm still getting over the bug I had a week ago or so now left me with a horrible cough so I'll try not to, <laughs> to cough down the mic for you but inevitably it's gonna happen so we'll start off with um, the diff and what everything does we've covered all of the um, sort of the MG UK so we won't we will leave all that you understand what goes on on there so with the diff what we have obviously we have an entry preload an entry diff middle and an exit and we'll start actually with the entry preload and um, what um sorry we'll start with the entry diff now pretty much like you would expect that to be the entry is very much just what what you think now the it doesn't however um let me just see if i can um i really need and typical because i'm on a different machine i need to get a little piece of a track now right just while it's here, this is probably gonna uh, gonna change. Yeah, typical. Think of a uh, think of the entry when you're coming into um, into a corner. I don't suppose I can pause. I can pause it. Hold on. Let's go on. Fast forward. Let's get to right. Let's um let's think coming into um into the Abbey chicane here. When you come tearing into here, you're in on the braking zone. Now the entry of the corner isn't all the way up until you hit the apex here. That's not where that diff will kick in. It is pretty much as you start to turn the wheel so to about here um, probably even there so um, again not the best of uh, not the best of views but it really is just the initial part of the corner so don't go thinking oh I've got oversteer you know just as I hit the apex here I'll adjust the entry diff well that's not really where you want to be uh, want to be heading for um, that actually leans more into the middle diff so um, when you're talking we're talking entry, so if you got that initial bit of turn, if the back end feels just a little bit like it's ready to to come around on you very quickly as you start start your turn in process, then um, tightening up the entry diff by tightening it up that means just make it a higher number, as it says down it says down the bottom, a higher number has more locking force, and that'll give you more understeer. But if you've got just like an that initial turn, it's just a bit snappy, a bit too much. You want to calm that down a fraction and you'll go up on the entry diff here if it's not enough for example if it feels like the car plows a little bit and then starts to turn what you basically got is your entry diff is too high and um, the middle diff setting is probably ideal although that might end up being too low because you're trying to compensate by getting the car to turn in the middle of the corner so that you come down on that setting and the car will initially start to turn better and then you'll switch over to the middle diff and you should carry on on the same smooth arc into the uh, into the apex now if you turn it down and all of a sudden the middle lift the car just over rotates then it might be that that you just need to just go back up one on the middle diff because you were already overcompensating with it being too open so um yeah so that's the entry diff the very initial part of the corner as you turn in if it's too much go up on the uh, go up on the uh, up on the diff if it just doesn't do enough then then down now on the middle uh, diff, I say that's pretty much as that one takes over. So once you've transitioned the car so that the the weight is more towards one side of the car, that's when you're getting the middle diff kick in, um, and that kicks in 
all the way to the apex, through the apex, and as you start to get back on the power again. Um, that really is where the middle draft. So that's predominantly the bulk of the corner. So it's one of the most important settings, but also one of the most tricky ones to get right as well, because not only does it affect the way it comes in, it affects the way the car comes out of the corner. And just the same principle again. So if you're coming into a corner, but the car right on the apex, like if you're going into a hairpin corner, for example, right on the apex, the car over rotates and, um, and spins out, then you're going to need to go up on that middle diff figure. But do be mindful when you do that, is that the car is going to have more locking come out, so it's going to want to hug the apex more coming out and have the opportunity to, to perhaps spin a little bit coming out of the corner as well. So you kind of got to find, you've got to fine tune that. And this is why I say um, make sure that you you have your entry and your middle set correctly. If you're if you've got this set quite tight, but this one's set loose, um, what's happening in the car is not initially turning, then all of a sudden it switches over to the middle and then it will turn. What you could probably uh, what you can probably do is go down on the entry diff so the car turns in a little bit more initially, but then the middle diff is a little bit more further up so that the car doesn't over rotate in the middle of the corner. And when it's so important to stop that over rotating going in as soon as we get any kind of like scrub on the back tires then uh, what you'll uh, what you'll do is you'll overheat them and you'll have less grip coming out of the corner so really work on that um, again on the on the middle diff if the car feels like it's wanting to snap around as soon as you get on the power there's a couple of things you could do there actually and we haven't spoke about this is check your throttle shaping sometimes people will share sets with throttle shapings down like one or two and that gives you a much bigger kick on uh, less uh, less throttle. So if that's at four, then what you want to do is you'll just want to calm down your middle diff again a little bit more. But you might have to compensate with your entry. So you, the whole car, you can see the whole car is working in unison, really. The the entries in the middle, um, just so that you don't get that initial kick of rotation um, coming out of the corner. Um, of course, if it doesn't rotate enough coming off the corner, then again you can go up on the middle diff. And this is why you might have a nice set, a nice car that feels great going into the corner, and you're like, well, I don't really want to go up. This is where the entry entry preload comes in as well, because this is much more about how the car reacts when you're coasting. And we do a lot of coasting in this car. We don't want to, um, but we have to. And um, so what you can do is you can uh, this is just entry and but also like I say it affects the car when it's coasting so much more as we're going to the middle of the corner just before we transition onto the gas so if say for example you want that higher diff for getting out of the corner um, but you want to obviously not affect how it rotates going into the corner while you're coasting then what you can do is you can go down on the entry diff um, and again, it's the same. Pre uh, so the entry preload. Again, it's if it's the same. If you've got if you've got that all balanced nicely, but just going in, just um, it's just got a hair too much on the entry, but exit feels great. Then you can go up on the entry preload as well, and that will stop how the car over rotates um, while you're coasting. The exit diff. It's exactly the same principle. Um, a higher number will lock up the will lock the diff together. And um, but that will give you a much more snap coming off of the corner. Um, it'll also give you understeer too. Think what you've got to think is it's like snap oversteer. That's the way it can work. And so it's a real the exit diff is a real fine tuning tool. Um, there is for, for you as a driver, there's going to be a couple of settings that will work quite nicely, I dare say, and you'll stick quite closely to them. And um, if you go too high, you'll find the car will just will just want to carry on rotating off. All of a sudden, it'll feel fine, and it'll just go doof, around. And that's because your your lock in is too high. Now, if it's um, if it's slightly too low, you can also get a bit of under. Uh, um, sorry, if it's slightly too high, you can get a bit of understeer as well. Um, and that will just push your wide coming out of the corner. Now, a lot of people might go, "Oh, I'll lock it up a bit to um, to 
to try and get it to scrub the tire, the outside tire to turn a bit more, or the inside tire to turn a little bit more, um, on depending on the corner. But that's you know you're just running the risk of overheating the tires and causing that snap over steer. So what you want to find is you want to find that perfect exit setting that allows you to come off the corner. Um, how you want to with the power. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of hand gestures which you can't see, and um, but doesn't give you that snap over steer. So really pay attention to what the car is doing. If if all of us if it's if it's snap over steer where it's fine and then it goes and you think oh well I'll look at this it says oh more under steer here if I put the the setting up you're just going to make that worse. Um, so you have to know exactly what it is. If the car is um, if the car just instantly comes um, you know the car sorry not instantly that's the snap if the car just drifts around off the exit corner and carries on rotating yeah then what you've got there is you have got oversteer so that's when your setting comes up so pay attention to what it is do a little bit of research on what snap oversteer is and um, you should understand then exactly how to tweak your diff whether you need to go down or you need to go up if it's snapping you've got to go down if it's just like you know, just gradual oversteer, over rotation, then you've got to go, you've got to go up. But fine tune, like one click, will trust me, will make a big, big difference to that. In car settings, pretty much as they say on the tin, um, it's the same as the, it's the same as the, um, as the in the actual garage settings as well. So you can just fine tune those in the car. Very useful as the balance changes. If obviously if you've got suddenly the rears get a little bit more worn and the car's a little bit more twitchy going into it, well, you know, change the diff so that the um, the car isn't so bad going in. You know, tighten the diff up. If it's the other way around, the fronts are wearing too quickly, then open it up so the car turns. And also you can think about opening it up when you're stuck in traffic. That will um, help the car turn and alleviate some of the dirty air. Right, okay, so let's just talk about brake bias then and how that can um, can affect the car and um, what you can, you know, how you can use that. Um, Again, super useful and something you must do when you get hold of a setup. If it's not yours, you haven't built it, you've grabbed it from the forum or the, you know, the um, setup shop that's on there, someone shared it with you, do have a play with the brake bias. It may be that when you get it, they might be, they might prefer a high brake pressure, they might prefer a low brake pressure. What you have to do is everybody has different equipment, yeah, different brake pedals, different load cells, different settings on those load cells, different um, percentages inside the sim. So no one person is going going to break exactly the same. So this is something that you have to play with on every set to try and make it feel more to your liking off the word, you know, from the word go. Um, you will start to learn pretty quickly what your preferred brake pressure is. Um, personally, I like medium. There's drivers in our in my team that that prefer low, and there's I think there's even one who will run high, um, and that just really comes down to, like I say, it's personal preference and feel, and the equipment that they've got. You know, some might um, some might have to really hammer on their brakes um, to get the car to stop anyway, and so a high pressure is good for them. Um, you know, medium works really really well for me. And um, others might have like a, a bit of a softer brake pedal, so you know they go for low because they're obviously yamming the brakes on quite a bit and, and easily as well, and they just want that little bit more fine control. Um, so have a play, but when you do have a play with that setting, you need to give it sort of 10, 15 laps. You need to spend some time with it. It's no good doing just two laps and go, oh, it's terrible. I've you know I've switched from high to medium. I'm overshooting every corner. Well, you're going to overshoot every corner because you've not got the same sort of brake pressure. You've got to readjust for that. But after 10 or 15, that's once you've got used to it, you might have more fine control over the car. And actually, your lap times might start to creep down just a fraction or consistency in the braking zones might improve. So, um, yeah, do have a play with all three settings, and um, but give them the laps that you need. Yes, it's time, but it's definitely worth doing. And you can find yourself a good sort of one, two tenths worth of consistency by doing that. Now, with the uh, with the car, it's got a pretty um, pretty advanced uh, brake bias system. Um, now, if you don't want to go through all the hassles of uh, trying to fine tune this, what you can do is you can set your base peak bias 
and uh, your, um, your sorry your base and your peak bias are exactly the same so at the moment as you can see I'm 55 and 57 and then I've actually got some ramping in here as well I'll go into what all that is now but what effectively that means is as I brake when I'm at 100% brake pedal I have 57% brake bias when I get to 35% on the brakes yeah, I then have a 55% brake so what that what that's actually doing is as I'm coming off the brakes the more the percentage is more shifting towards the rear of the car now why why would we want to why would we want to do that why would we just not want 55% going through or if I wanted 57 set it to 57 well with the uh, with the F1 car as we're hammering into a corner, especially um, sort of say like a say a third gear, 90 degree corner, which we can take relatively quickly, um, but um, we run the risk of locking up into that type of corner or like a second gear corner where we're really heavy on the brakes. And um, the reason being is we've got a lot of downforce going into that corner initially, so much speed that's pushing the front wing into the ground. So there's loads of grip from the front tire. But as we start to brake, initially we'll get a shift of weight onto the front of the car, and that will give us even more that you know get produced. The fronts will produce even more grip because we're loading up the front, and um, so we can have that brake bias quite far forward. But of course, the rears we unload the rears, yeah. So the the rear tire is hasn't got quite as much brake um, uh, uh, sort of downforce onto it. So that it becomes slightly unloaded. So you've got the chance of locking up the rears on the initial, um, like when you brake. If we have that percentage further forward, then that avoids that. But also, as we start to slow down the car, you know, we naturally trail brake. So we're coming off the brakes as we get closer towards the corner because we don't need we don't need that full full brake in. You know, if you've got maximum brakes, the car just well eventually comes to a stop, um, but or you plough straight on. So we uh, we want to trail brake into the corner to a degree. Of course, we like the coast in the McLaren, yes. in the Through the middle of the corner, we want to be no brakes, but as we start to transition, we're still going to be coming down, so we're still going to have that similar sort of trail brake look in the, um, in the telemetry. And the reason we will come off the brakes is because as the downforce reduces because the speed is reduced, what will um, what will happen is that front tire will give up the amount of grip that it's got, and um, all of a sudden then we're going to worry about lockup. So that's why as we're coming off the brakes, we want to shift that percentage backwards slightly as we do it to try and avoid that locking up. Now that's how you you will fine tune. Um, it can be that, at, see at the moment, what I've basically said is that when I'm at 35% brakes, I know at that point I'm pretty much ready to get into a corner, so I need it to be at 55, that's why I start my ramping. But it might be, initially you'll go and set the car at like zero, so you know exactly where it is, you've got that 2% margin that, you know, from 0% brakes to 100% brakes, you can see the adjust, you can feel the adjustment. Now, my honest um, advice when it comes to setting up the brake bias is, is set your bias, set your peak and your base at the same percentage, and find out what the percent is that avoids locking up, um, avoids locking up the rears when you're going into a corner. The rears locking is a major, major issue, and will spin the car almost every time. Once you've figured out that particular setting. Then what you can do is you can start to apply a bit of peak brake bias into there, so you can increase that. And that means you'll be able to be a bit more aggressive on the brake pedal initially, so you can you know, can make your braking distance just a little bit shorter, so that you're not locking up the rears on initial um, braking as well. Um, and then it's all a, then it's all a case of once you get to a once you get to a point you can sort of fine tune that so that the car rotates into the corner better because as that brake bias shifts further backwards the car will rotate more into the corner now if it rotates too much then you've gone uh, you've gone a little bit too far so you can either come down on this percentage here or what you could actually do is say oh well actually I don't want it to um, I, I, I want it to ramp up a little bit later so by moving this percentage the bias ramping percentage down it means you'll also have a slightly higher percentage going into that corner so there's so much fine tuning you can do but I hope the explanation of why you would want to use this setting rather than just leave it on 55 makes complete sense if you can get this just dialed in right 
not only can you break a tiny little bit later but you can also you, you can also control the car stop it from locking up and control the car the way the car rotates into the corner so if you need just a hair more rotation then uh, like I say you can just move uh, move that percentage up to say 40 there and that would make the car just turn a tiny little bit more as you're coming off of the um, off of the brake pedal um, yeah that's about it the brake the peak brake bias offset this just changes sort of your, your bias percentage and it's more an in-car adjustment um, than anything I would say so you can just move that percentage it's quite a chunk actually um, five leaves it in the middle um, I believe it will allow you to use you can use this to get a, a more yet more front brake bias than what the max setting will allow you to use but to be honest I, I haven't found the need to use that in in um, um, in there the, the percentages that we've got to play with seem quite quite nice um, in regards to in-car adjustments as well um, have a play very very useful in car again much like the diff if the car just starts to turn in a little bit too much as the rears go then you know work that brake bias forward in the car it's super useful to keep the car under control as the rears start to wear and and vice versa if the car is plowing on through the corners and um, you know you're um, you want to move that brake bias backwards so that the car will actually to help help turn so use a combination of the diff and of the brake bias and you should be uh, should be should be good to go but um yeah that's it hope you found um that useful two really important areas of the car that you must have a play with once you've um yeah once you've got a setup off of somebody else this will help fine tune it for yourself this is the this is like the go to area don't grab a set and start playing with other areas um this would be my very first thing i would suggest doing and then go and tweak to your pressures that you found that have worked on other setups go and use those as well right thanks guys next week is spa and that will be the final part of the um of this and all i'm going to do on there is show you how to take a race setup and convert it into a queue setup um yeah bit tricky working out spring deflections and all sorts of stuff like that so i thought i'd do a video on that just to show you out but that will complete it so in the season we've covered pretty much everything in a bit of detail hope you found it all useful and um, yeah, we'll uh, watch this space. If you've enjoyed uh, these videos and you want to get a bit more, next season I'm moving over to the Formula Renault 2.0. I'm going to do it all again in the Formula Renault. So yeah, glad for punishment apparently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, have good weeks uh, racing at uh, at Silverstone. This will be like I said, this will be coming up a bit late, but should be there for uh, for the weekend with a bit of luck. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. Um, yeah, enjoy your racing, and um, yeah, catch you for the next video.